Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight, brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net and Ultimate Guard. And man, I have to give a huge shout out to Brian Justing for this list. Like, he, I swear he was just pulling my leg. Like, he sent me a list, like, man, you really gotta try this, you really gotta try this. I'm like, dude, this just looks like a ton of bad cards. Like, I see that you're doing, like, the Prisha Kajuda combo, but it's like, all right, it's Prisha Beastless. How good can this really be? Just play the deck once, and you'll see exactly how strong it can be. Like, there's a lot of very unique and specific interactions that happen within this deck, and exactly what Reflect does for this deck that absolutely makes it great. Now, we are really waiting for the next set where we get the two-drop Prisha, which, just to give you a, an eye on that, if you're on the draw and your opponent doesn't have a Necromancy on their Lancelot, you can play your Prisha, pump it with Reflect, and kill their Lancelot without having any kind of, you know, drawback to it. There's nothing they can do, which is great. So, there's like four or five cards that I immediately cut from this list Go once we have A4, but for now, this is the list that we have, and I absolutely love playing this list, and uh, it was able to beat the Xion list that we previewed last week, and the deck has some game, very surprisingly. It's a very technical deck to play, but it's definitely worth checking out. So, as always, we'll talk about the ruler first, then go into the stone deck, which is pretty simple, and then talk about the main deck cards. So, up first, we have the ruler Reflect Refrain. Again, as I said in every video, not too much needs to be said about this, but I'll go into a little bit more detail later. The plus 200, plus 200 pump with Reflect is extremely, extremely relevant and why this deck is as good as it is. I understand filtering is also good, tutoring, all that other stuff, but I really have to say what separates this deck from pretty much being, you know, tier 1.5, tier 2 playable is the plus 200 pump effect. So I know a lot of people already know what Reflect Refrain does, and I just can't stress enough how important his pump is. For our stone base, we're playing four of the Sacred Beast Memoria. Now, I know a lot of people are going to see this and be like, oh my god, what are we doing? Um, but honestly, it's great for the deck. Obviously, if you're playing all beasts, um, it's a worse pure stone in a, in a sense that you have to pay one green and tap that to give plus 200, plus 200 a beast. And we have an approximately infinite beast in our deck, so we're always going to be able to reveal something. So when we're playing an all wind-based deck, it's just an auto-inclusion that we should be considering putting these in. So because of that, we're playing four, and it's, it's been relevant a few times, but more often than not, you want to be maximizing your will to do other things. And then just to finish out the stone base, we play six wind magic stones. Um, a note about this for the next set, we might just throw in for the um, Arlo's Memoria, just because it can tap for green and tap a green and something else, which would then open up sideboarding options if you really wanted to go that direction, but um, I think ultimately you want to just keep all your stones to be able to produce wind, and that should be the main focus of your deck just because of how good so many of these cards are. So, going into the main deck itself, and again, when we're playing uh, Wind Stones and we're playing Reflect, it's no surprise that we're auto-including four orbs. Uh, not only does this generate card advantage, it allows you to do things like uh, bounce multiple things in a turn. Uh, it lets you, you know, tutor and then bounce, you know, things of that nature. So, there's a lot of value that you can get out of having orbs in the deck, and I absolutely believe it's a, you know, must-include for it. So, going to our one-drops, we'll start with the spells. Uh, probably one of the biggest cards that we got out of uh, the Moonlight Saber was Prisha's Call to Action. So the fact that this card d just does everything for free is great. Uh, obviously you're going to target a beast with it, so it's free to, free to cast. Uh, gives it swiftness and target attack, which can be super relevant. But then it draws a card, so it replaces itself for free and boosts one of your guys up. Um, it's absolutely great for just being able to kill your opponent out of nowhere. You know, they might swing out and they might not be expecting a game one, or they just have to swing out to pressure your life totals to, you know, win in two turns, and then you can just go, oh, pressure's call to action, double rapid growth, you're dead. So, again, the fact that it draws a card is absolutely insane. Uh, speaking of which, four rapid growth. Um, card's amazing. The fact that it has the remnant or flashback, as a lot of people know about, and it's a 400-400 pump for one wind will is just absolutely great. It allows us to really maximize our will efficiently and get a big stat boost when we need it and when our opponent might not be expecting it. Another card that's going to combo great with Prisha in the next set. <sighs> this card I really wrote, wrote off, didn't care, like I get it's a 400-400 one drop, it's your you know higher defense one drops, it's great. Um, 
What I didn't realize, or really give much into consideration, is that, especially with Bidoof, or Afnak as he's called in the game, but everyone calls him Bidoof apparently, um, if they play Lancelot, you can obviously pump with your uh, Reflect. You know, They're thinking that maybe they'll get in damage, maybe they'll trade with their Lancelot, or they'll untap it, that's obviously a real thing too. But the point is, you can very easily buff this to a 6-6 six, six with just using Reflect, or an 8-8 eight, eight using Bidoof, or you have an 8-8 eight, eight with Rapid Growth, and that can put a huge pressure on your opponent's life total, and then again, you can easily do the what Necrolance Reflects do, uh, and just untap it in a turn so then they can't revenge swing it. So, card has been absolutely great, and I love going for the turn one play of uh, calling to action it if I have multiple in my hand, attacking them with a 400-400 swiftness. Uh, moving into some two-drop resonators, we have Kajuta, or the Sacred Ox. Uh, battle Cattle, Metal Cattle, whatever you want to call it. Um, card's great if you get to live the dream of turn two, Battle, Cat, battle Cow into turn three, push it up with Evolution Counter, on it, fight something, so it's a 1,000-1,000, and you call it to action Prisha, which does approximately infinite damage then on that turn, or 1,800 damage if I was going to your 17, sorry, 1,700 damage. Um, so it's a great way to not only have a removal spell for one of your opponent's things, but it's a great, you know, 10-10 body that they're often not going to be able to do much about. For Afnak or Af Afonic and Badoof, again, I just call him Badoof. So, this is another one of those cards that it combos very, very well with both Rhyna Tosker. You can give your guys a pump spell when you need it and get another blocker in the field. You can play it with Rapid Growth and make it a 10-10. Or, super sneaky, you can play a Rhyna Tosker on turn 1. You can play this on turn 2. So, Rhyna Tosker gets plus 200 attack for Albeast entering the field. He gets another plus 200 from Bidoof, and then you can give it another plus 200 with Reflect. So, if you're on the draw, and obviously your opponent's not going to expect the Rhyna Tosker to kill their Lancelot, you can set up your turn where you're going to be able to revenge swing on their Lancelot and keep your Ratatosaker. Um, it happened once in testing, and then my opponent very quickly learned that that is a possibility. Obviously, they really can't afford to play around that because it one requires you to have a couple cards, but they need to be aggressive with their Lancelot attack. So it's it's been pretty awesome thinking about all the different shenanigans that you can do with uh, this deck and all the extra damage boosts. Uh, the card that's going to be cut for the Battle Prishas, or was just, I want another Evolution guy, is these. Um, he's okay. Uh, it's obviously not the greatest, that's why it's only three. He becomes an 8-8 with Flying, which the Flying can be super relevant because then you can just, you know, double Rapid Growth uh, and make it a 16 and swing for a ton of damage in the air. Um, obviously, again, not probably one of the best things that you can be doing. I'd rather be playing uh, Battle Ox to get the removal spell or something of that nature, but I want another Evo target. Uh, for Prisha, and this does have some value for the, the deck itself. Turns out flying is always good. Uh, another card we put in, it's just kind of a placeholder, and I wasn't terribly impressed with it, but it's definitely wasn't terrible. Um, Counterattack is great. The thing I hate is it's uh, chance speed, so it really makes your using your will awkward. But, you know, giving plus 400, plus 400, being able to fight something, or giving it, again, plus 6 if you're using your free reflect pump, can make your stuff trade very favorably with a lot of your opponent's spells. So, there's going to be times where they, again, you use some low beast resonator that doesn't seem like a big deal, and then you're pumping with Reflect plus Beastly Queen's counterattack, and you're able to kill something of theirs of a lot higher value. And it turns out it feels great. And then, of course, uh, the thing that makes Battle Ox just the greatest, uh, we play for the Prisha. So again, when it comes into play, it gives something counter, so you get to basically Evo your uh, Sacred Ox for free. Um, but again, a, another really important thing to note here is that whenever she gets uh, buffed by effect, it gets double. Um, so if, you, if you've been paying attention up to this point, you realize that we have Reflect, we have Counter Attack, we have Beastly Attack, which you'll see next. We have Rapid Growth for days. So a lot, sometimes you're going to be in a position where you can just play your uh, Refrain, they go to bounce, you bounce whatever they're blocking with, and then you just go rapid growth, rapid growth, you're dead. Uh, because you've already got a lot of damage on in the early game, and ultimately it's just a very awesome card to use. So again, lastly, speaking of that card, we have three Beastly Attack, which gives it plus 600, plus 600. Um, and it's, again, super relevant because it can then make Prisha a 1919 that even if blocked, is going to be dealing damage to your opponent. Um, and it can do a lot of things. Again, it's instant, that's why I prefer this version instead. I was playing against uh, McQuestion, he was using a Valentino 1.0 deck, 
and he was using the uh, Where Rabbit had instant speed to bounce my guys, which turns out felt really bad, but um, yeah, that's a card. So there's certain things, you know, instant speed, battle tricks are always, always, always going to be better than their, you know, chance speed counterparts, strictly because it makes your opponent's options a bit more awkward and that you can't, you know, hold up this big neon sign and saying, hey, I'm going to use this spell chant thing to hopefully kill your guy. If you have a counter spell, this is exactly the time to use it. So, again, that's all I have for the main deck. I want to give a huge shout out again to Brian Justing for being able to ship me this list. I'm so sorry for not believing you or not giving you enough credit originally and not playing it sooner, but I think it does get a lot better in the next set. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be asking, what about some sideboard options? Um, that is really going to depend on how the direction you want to take the deck in. You could transfer it to a more mid-range beast list, and you can play like Wall of Winds and Keen Senses, uh, which obviously is not the greatest card right now, but it's still a card to use. When we get Dual Stones, that's going to obviously open up uh, light attributes for addition removal, Seal of Wind and Light, things of that nature. So there's a lot of different ideas for sideboard actions. Oh, and uh, Drops uh, Ugisil was the other card I was thinking about just to protect your guys. Uh, because it turns out being able to protect Aprisha uh, through their removal is also fantastic. So there's a lot of different ways that this deck can go with A4. Again, it's going to be very interesting when we get Dual Stones as well, and that's something I'm going to be very excited for, if only because it makes decks like these that are going to be you know, more playable. I mean, obviously this one, it's all green based, but then I'm sure there's going to be some cards like having the off chance to shift Prisha into her Valentina side so that when it dies, you get to steal one of the resonators. That's great. So you get to fight something when it comes into play, kill it, shift it, kill it again, hopefully block with one of their guys favorably and steal one of the other guys. Like that's going to be a three for one if you pull all that off. And that's insane value for this kind of deck and what it wants to be doing. So I really hope you like guys like this video. Again, this is one of those lists that you just have to play, and it's a super, super technical deck to play um, in terms of battle math and all that stuff. But it's absolutely amazing to play, and honestly, I've been stuck on it anytime the guys want to play test Mike, but I have to play one more game with this beast deck. So, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to check out GamersGauntlet.net, and of course, UltimateGuard.com for all your TCGR or Force of Will needs. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on the video. That absolutely helps get the word out there and get more people in the Force of Will. And of course, make sure you let us know what you want to see next, it would be a, what kind of rulers, what brews you want to see. We're always more than happy to supply you guys with videos. So, this is Matt again, I'll be at the rest of the Six Sages Gaming crew. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Age Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and force of community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.